Tschüss. Hi everyone, we're Mall Watch and uh, I'm Tony. I'm JJ. And today we're going to be showing you some of the few things that you can find on Mall. I'll be taking you through the shorelines and some of the species that we can find here. What species uh, are you going to show us, Tony? Well, we have the otter, which is very elusive, uh -huh. but uh, some believe it's a myth, but you can find them. Uh, we have oyster catchers. They're really cute, and uh, we've got a bunch of birds, and I, I think they're they're in for a treat, really. Yeah, talking yeah. of birds, I'm going to show you guys some some of the bigger birds of prey in Britain, let alone let alone on Mull. And uh, you can also see some of the bigger mammals. Oh yes. And some of the icons of the British landscape. Wow. What are some of these uh, icons? Oh, you can say you're going to see the golden eagle. The, white-tailed fish eagle, red deer. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting time. But first, let's find out what the people do. The Isle of Mar is home to a population of approximately 2,800 permanent residents. Many of them living off the land. For example, there is a large logging industry on the island. Logs are felled from planted forests then shipped to timber docks by lorry. There they are unloaded onto the dock or straight onto the vessel for their final destinations all over the world. Much of the island is used for livestock, a major industry for the farmers. Most of the land is open to grazing for the large sheep population that can be found by the shore and up on the mountainsides. They have interesting characters and the fluffy lambs are one of the cuter residents of the island. Roaming freely across farmland like sheep are cows. The iconic Highland cow was bred specifically for the harsh Scottish environment. With its long hair and impressive white horns, they may seem truly wild, but they actually all belong to farms and farmers. Tourism is a major part of the island's economy, as many choose Marl as a holiday destination. Taking the ferry, you can arrive in Craig Newham by car, motorhome or on foot. The main town on the Isle of Mar is Tobermory. With its port full of fishing and leisure vessels, it is a busy coastal town. The shops and restaurants thrive off the never-ending flow of tourists. Tobermory is famous for its picturesque painted houses and buildings, which were once used in a children's television series. Another reason for visiting Mull is its fantastic hill walking scenery. The highest peak on the island stands at 966 metres and of the remnants of a formerly active volcano. The vast mountain is called Ben Moor. A four hour walk made on a clear day climbing up can provide stunning vistas of the whole island and its surrounding waters. Whilst the reason most tourists visit Mull is to see some of Scotland's iconic wildlife, such as the white-tailed sea eagle and otters. Tao spoke to Neil, a tourist and wildlife enthusiast who knows Mull rather well. Hello Neil, how are you today? I'm good, fine, thank you. Um, thank you for interviewing with, with us. My pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, so I know that you have been uh, visiting Mall for many, many, many times, so I would like to ask you some questions. That's okay. Um, I've, been, I've been coming to Mall about 10 years now. Yeah, wow, well, yeah. it's been a long time to go into it. Yes. Um, so, what do you like about more? Oh, everything, everything. Apart from the weather, <laughs> it can be a right foul. Yeah, today is it? It's yeah. a nice day. Yeah. Um, so, how much do you know about more? How much do you understand about wildlife here? Oh, wildlife, well, I know there's lots of it. Um, and I know they're very elusive. Um, there's a deer, there's eagles, both types. Yeah. Uh, there's otters, there's enarias, there's um, short-eared owls. What are you most interested in? Oh, I should think that my, my favourite creature is the golden eagle. Golden eagle, yeah, I bet. Yeah. 
Like many tourists come here for Golden Eagle. Are you aware? Yes. Um, so, what are you aware that things have changed over the years and in the time you've been here? Well, that's an easy one. More tourists. Oh. Yeah. Horrible people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how, how tourists affect our wildlife? Well, not only the wildlife. Um, they, they affect the countryside. Yeah. They leave fag butts all over the place, litter all over the place, light fires all over the place. It's, they're just terrible. Yeah. Um, so if you can do one thing to change it, make it better, what would you do? I would ban fires. I think that would be more special. I think that would preserve the grassland. Yeah, indeed. I totally agree with you. Well, thank you for interview uh, with us today. Have wish you a good day. Thank you very much. You did a good interview. Cheers, Tao. It's interesting how uh, Neil, as a tourist, didn't enjoy what the other tourists are doing on the island. Yeah, it was definitely uh, interesting, as you say, to hear someone's perspective as someone who's been coming here for many years. Um, I mean, the tourists do add a lot to the economy of the island and help it sustain itself, but they should really leave Mall the way they found it, you know? Definitely, you've got to be respectful when you come to anywhere in the world mm. and uh, try and leave the place in a better place or at least the same as you found it. Um, but why do some tourists come to the island? Well, one of the biggest attractions on the island is uh, the shoreline. And um, I'll be your guide to it and take you around, show you what we can find. Let's go. The island shorelines are host to a diverse group of animals. And if you know where to look, you'll be in for a treat when visiting Mall. Knowing the tide timetable of the island will assist you in your search for wildlife on the shores of Mall. The tide rises and falls due to gravitational forces of the moon. Tidal cycles contain two high tides and two low tides each day. Even though both the sun and the moon influence the tides, the moon plays a bigger role because it is much closer to Earth. The high tide brings to shore an array of life. The beaches are covered in seaweed and rocks and amongst the rubble, crabs can be spotted lurking in the shallows. When the tide is low, it exposes the rock pools, some of which are full of life, playing host to a bunch of small critters such as anemones, shrimp and small crabs. Low tide is also prime feeding time for some birds. The heron will go after small fish that have been trapped in rock pools because of the fall of the tide. One of the bigger animals to come ashore during high tide is the otter. These mammals live in freshwater bodies but are more often spotted on shore. Fish makes up most of the otter's diet, but they have been known to consume birds, frogs and crustaceans. I caught up with an otter expert on the island who has spent years observing the otter's behavior on Mall. He had this to say about his fuzzy friends. Hi Alex. Hi there. It's uh, great to finally be meeting with you to have this interview. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So I just wanted to ask you a couple questions about uh, what you do here on the island regarding uh, the otters. Yeah, fire away. So how would you describe your relationship with the otters on the island? Uh, my relationship with the otters is more of just a, an observer um, than anything else. I don't study them, I don't do anything, I just like being part of their world and uh, if I can share that with other people, uh, with my photography, then that's fantastic um, and I'm in a privileged position to be able to do that kind of thing. Uh, how long have you been observing these otters and photographing them? So I've been watching otters since I was a little kid. Uh, I grew up here on Mull and so it's something I've done forever. Um, about three years ago I started getting more interested in, in watching them and then two years ago I picked up uh, a 
DSLR for the first time and got into wildlife photography. Since then, I've spent many hours with the ocean. It's been fantastic. Brilliant. What, if anything, um, would you say is different or unique about the otters on the island? I wouldn't say there's anything particularly unique about Moll's otters, other than that they don't live very long. Uh, I've never, let's say, as I say, studied them myself, but I'm, I'm led to believe that we have a high turnover here of otters, and they only tend to live about two, maybe three years old. If you go inland into the middle of Britain, for example, they can live to be six or seven, uh, and so that's maybe the only thing I can think of. Why do you think there's such a high turnover of otters? Road deaths. Uh, a lot of them are killed on an evening as they cross the roads to, to return to their halts, and they're not found till the next day, of course. Um, that's tragic. Out of all of the times you've gone out uh, to observe these otters, what has been the most um, exciting encounter you've had with them? Probably my most memorable experience was with a mother and her two cubs uh, on one of the locks here. And I'd been watching them for maybe two or three months at this point, uh, and she'd kind of gotten used to me. They knew the, how I smelled, they knew uh, what I looked like because I wore the same sort of things uh, and so they were used to me uh, and one day she decided to, to leave the cubs with me while she was fishing. Uh, she'd caught some prey, brought it ashore and the cubs quite happily ate it just metres from me uh, while she went off and fished several hundred metres away before bringing more prey back uh, and, and that was a, a memorable experience because I was not accepted but almost into their world uh, and it was a fantastic encounter. Wow, that's great. You're very fortunate to have experienced that. Um, so thank you, Alex. My uh, pleasure. Thank you for giving us your time. Yeah. Uh, it was great talking to you. Yeah, and you. Happy uh, spotting. Thank you. Further out into sea lays the biggest carnivore in Britain and my personal favorite of the island, the seal. Often confused for otters when swimming in the sea because of their similar head shape, a seal can be identified by the absence of their back above the surface. Contrary to the otter whose backs remain afloat, seals pop their head through the surface to observe with their bodies vertically in the water. Mall is home to two species of seal. These are the common seal and the Atlantic seal. Mall is also an ideal location for the avid bird watcher. It is home to an array of resident birds which can be found on the shore year round, as well as migratory birds which stop here on their travels. Amongst these is Britain's largest gull, the black-backed gull, a strong population of oyster catchers, a variety of ducks and geese, and the elegant heron. Still, what most bird watchers come to see are the magnificent birds of prey that have coined them all Eagle Island. So Jay, what do you think about uh, my segment on the shorelines? Yeah, I thought it was really interesting. There's a lot to see on the shores. Mm -hmm. uh, but one, one thing I found really interesting was when you spoke to Alex. Yeah. He had a lot to say and with a bit of perseverance and patience, you can actually have quite a relationship with these animals. That's true. That's one of the things I found really amazing about him. Leave alone the, let alone the work that he does taking pictures of the otters, which we've got to see and you know are pretty amazing. Um, the bond he has with them is pretty special as well. Yeah, it is. It's sad though that unfortunately two a month sometimes get killed on the roads of Mull, and it's why they have a shorter lifespan. Yeah, that, that really was a staggering fact, actually. Um, people just need to be more careful on the roads, slow down. They're driving too fast up and down this road. And uh, yeah, they should pay more attention. Definitely, definitely. As, as after all, otters are one of the iconic animals of the British landscape, and especially of Scotland. And you're lucky to see one on Mars. Um, but I'm gonna show you some of the other iconic species of Scotland such as birds of prey and deer species. And we've got a little treat for you, one really rare, rare little fellow you might see.
one of the iconic species found regularly on Mull shores is the otter, as we've just seen. But the island is also home to birds of prey and deer species that can be seen across the land. For example, kestrels are often seen sitting on posts above grassy areas, while buzzards can be seen soaring high near cliffs and crags. Buzzards often hover above fields looking for prey. Raptors have excellent eyesight, pinpointing their prey from above. However, buzzards and kestrels are just some of the birds of prey that can be seen. For example, two icons of the Scottish landscape found here are the eagle species. The white-tailed fish eagle is Britain's largest bird of prey and one of the largest in the world. Fish eagles had once been exterminated from the Scottish landscape, but after reintroduction they can be found on Mull and across Scotland once again. They roost high up in trees with access to sea locks for them to hunt. They have an impressive wingspan and have been known to hunt birds such as seagulls or oyster catchers. However, they predominantly hunt for fish, spotting them from above the surface of the water, using their impressive talons to catch them. The white-tailed eagle's cousin is the golden eagle. It is almost as big, but more majestic. They have been known to hunt lambs and young deer, but their diet normally consists of small mammals. Both eagles aren't above scavenging, but even they give this poor sheep a miss. The golden eagle is elusive and hard to find compared to a seafaring cousin. Nesting on cliff faces means that the eagles can often only be seen soaring high in the sky above the hills. This is where you can also find red deer, which hide in the high winds from biting insects. The red deer is the largest mammal found on land in Britain. They are impressive animals but are startled easily. Grazing in the meadows and grasslands, they're often hired from people in the bracken. With no real natural predators apart from humans, they roam freely across Mull. Many will recognise the red deer's close relative, the fallow deer, from the film Bambi. Fallow deer inhabit woodland and come out in the evenings to graze in the open fields. One of these three individuals in particular is interesting, as it could be confused for a red deer. However, I believe we have found a rare melanistic fallow deer where it's darker skin pigmentation making it appear black. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we found a rare blonde individual too. With blonde hair, it is in stark contrast to the black individual found in the same area. Although both rare conditions, they do not affect the overall health of the animal. Still wary of humans, even the smallest movement can be the difference between seeing these magnificent species. These icons of Scotland are elusive patience and determination you can find them. If you need it, local experts can be invaluable in helping you find their wildlife on Mars. Wow Jay, that was really interesting. Um, what I'm really curious about though is that melanistic deer that you found. Yeah. yeah. Could you expand on that a bit? Basically melanism, uh, in this case on a fallow deer, has meant that there's darker skin pigmentation and which means that it's appearing dark brown slash black and uh, when it grows up it will have a full set of antlers like an adult fallow deer will and yeah it's quite interesting that you can have such a range in the fallow deer's colour coming from the black individual all the way to the blonde but for the most part they're like the orange and white individual orange slash brown yeah. with white spots in the middle yeah, that's really cool that uh, you can find such variety within other species as well. But, while you're on the island, you might be sidetracked by all the wonderful wildlife. But you might miss some of the interesting flora here too. This is true. Uh, so now we go over and going to have a quick look at the flora of the island. And it's mainly the most common species, just so you've got an idea of what you might find on your trip. The Isle of Mole is host to an array of flora with a variety of different species found scattered across the fields and plains. Here are some of the most common flowers you are likely to see on the island. Hogweed is a flower that belongs to the carrot family and can be recognized by its heads of flowers that can be seen from July to September. They can grow up to two meters in height with rough leaves. The soldier beetle can often be found on it. The eyebright is part of the broom rape family. They live partially as a parasite with roots tapping into other plants for nutrients. They are found in grasslands throughout Scotland. 
The red clover is another plant widespread across the grasslands, which belongs to the pea family, but unlike other members of its family, it lacks creeping stems. Also found in grassland areas is the ox eye daisy, which is another flower commonly spotted on the island. It is distinguished by its white petals and yellow centre. Common cotton grass, also known as bog cotton in Scotland, is part of the sedge family. It has far creeping underground stems and is found in wet moorlands. They can help you identify bogs. The white water lily is part of the water lily family. This plant grows in abundance in freshwater bodies at depths of half to three meters in nutrient poor locks. The hedge woundwort is another species that is said to have a pugnant smell. It grows on roadsides and hedgerows. The honeysuckle can reach heights of 6 meters. It is part of the honeysuckle family and scrambles among shady rocks and hedgerows almost anywhere in Scotland. Bramble is part of the rose family. It can be found in bushy places, woods and roadsides. Heather is very common in Scotland and it is part of the heather family. It is also known as ling and grows naturally in pine woods and narrow zones above the tree line on mountains. Self heel is part of the thyme family and is found in lawns and grasslands as well as woodland clearings. They can get up to 30 centimeters tall. From the daisy family also comes the most iconic flower in Scotland, the spear thistle, commonly known as the Scottish thistle. The spear thistle is very common and is found in abundance throughout the fields and farmland of Scotland. The sheer number of these plants along with Scottish folktale has resulted in it being the Scottish emblem and the emblem of the British Encyclopedia. So those are just some of the flowers that we can find on Mole, um, the most common ones. Yeah, you can find them all over the island, most of those interesting flora. Uh, just in case you do get bored of the wildlife, which I don't think you will. There's plenty more to do here on Mole. So I have a question for you. Out of all of these iconic animals that you've managed to spot here on the island, yeah. what sticks out to you as your favorite? Well, it's got to be the white-tailed fish eagle. It's one of the largest birds of prey in the world. Mm -hmm. I think it's fourth, fourth largest in the world. It's got impressive talons, huge beak, an enormous wingspan. And on Mole Charter's boat, we managed to see it up close and personal. And it was a really exciting experience that I'll take back with me for, for life. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, talking of favourite animals, mm -hmm. I remember you saying that your favourite animal is the seal. Why is that? Oh, they're just so wonderful, aren't they? They're, they're cute and fluffy. And to be honest, I think I was really amazed at the fact that they were the UK's largest carnivore. Okay. I wouldn't call them fluffy. They're more blubber. I know, but you just expect a carnivore to be more grrr, you know? <laughs> But it's 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 a cute carnivore. It's a nice carnivore. Cute, and um, there was this one individual on the rock, uh, which was just priceless, really. Um, let's play back the clip. And again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. To be fair, that is pretty funny. That's all we have time for today, unfortunately. Um, but it's been a pleasure taking you guys through the shorelines and showing you the iconic wildlife of Mull. Thank you guys for watching. We've had a great time. Mull has been so kind to us while we've been here. And uh, that is all from us today. Fortunately, that's all we have time for now on Mull Watch. Aww. And uh, this is gonna have to be the end of the show. See you guys. Good night. It's a wrap, bro. You left me hanging, G. Nice.
stuff on my necklace. <laughs> Where are you going? It's, I thought we were taking off the mics, bro. Yeah, but you don't have to just take off so you don't, so we don't have to. <laughs> have you stopped? Dude, I thought we were taking off the mics and then walking like towards Rick. Oh, towards Rick. I was just yeah. saying out of shot. We could have done that. You get me? I do get you. Yeah. I feel like it would be cool if we like left them here though. And then be like, you know, we're leaving the set, like peace out. And you forgot to fist pump me, man. You're just adding to these cutaway scenes, bro. You're adding to these bloopers, fam. You're trying to get shit done. You're the one who's changing how we're doing things left off center. Yeah, man, I create as I go along. Uh, am I in the same spot, Rick? I think I am. So we just do the outtake, right? The last outro. No, we gotta do that all again. From the melanistic? Nah, we just we only have to do it from a... Uh... What's your favorite animal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was priceless. That was that was so funny. Yeah, I, I kind of understand why you like seals so much. Yeah, they're just special me, characters. For me, I prefer the eagles. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. So um, that's all we have time for today, unfortunately. Uh, thank you for watching. We've had a great time on Mal. It's been a pleasure. Thank you to the locals who've been so kind to us. But that's thank all you. from us. Have a good day. Cheers. You're getting it wrong though. <laughs> it, you know, have you cut it, Rick? Rick? <laughs> we out.